Welcome to Aerospace Structures 2. We'll be covering composite override for pressure vessels. We'll be using netting analysis in theory to size various designs. First, I want to remind you what composite overwrap pressure vessels are. Uh, composite overwrap pressure vessels are basically a composite that's wrapped on a liner. And that liner materials can be metallic, rubber, plastic. And the idea of this liner is to prevent fluid from escaping through the wall. Well, the composite is taking the majority of the load. And so therefore, in a netting analysis, we only focus on the composite to ensure it has proper capability to take the loads. And we assume that the liner's behavior uh, is going to be primarily to act like a fluid permission barrier. Now recall that it's possible that the liner will take a lot of loads and it could fail on the cyclic fatigue. And the idea here is to really gain an understanding of the design using simple methods. I'm gonna uh, use a book by, or a paper uh, written by BW2 uh, on preliminary design of tubular composite structures using netting theory and composite degradation factors. It's a great write-up that, that can be very helpful in this uh, analysis. Let's first uh, remind ourselves um, what is going on when you have pressure applied on a, tube, on, a, on a tubular structure or a pressurized structure. What we find is that N theta here, so N phi, and we, we studied this back uh, in mechanics of materials. We have the N phi here. It's the actual loading condition per unit width. And this quantity here is going to be for a pressure vessel that has a pressure applied P with, with a radius R is going to be PR over two. Uh, while N theta is going to be the hoop load per unit width. equals P times R. So that, that's what we've learned in mechanics uh, of materials. Um, in effect, stress phi axial is PR over 2T. T is the thickness of the wall. And so therefore, N times N phi times T is N phi in this example. And similarly, sigma theta equals PR divided by T sigma theta times t equals n theta. And you may have seen this uh, formulation before, but I'm writing it a different way so you can look at it more carefully. And when I look at a helical wine pattern, so usually filament wine composite structure are gonna take, are gonna have hoop plies to react the hoop pressure the pressure in the hoop direction. While helical plies react the pressure partially in the axial, in the hoop direction, primarily in the axial direction. So that's what we want to have. And usually these helical plies come in plus minus alpha, comes in pairs. And you can see one pair here, you can see the helical ply here, and there'll be another one going that way. So at, um, at alpha there as well. So this will be a minus alpha and W alpha right there. So you're going to have these helical plies crossing uh, across this overwrap. And the idea here is that we wanna find out how many of the hoop layers we need, how many helical layers we need, helical layers we need. So let, let's examine this very quickly here. 
what I'm showing here is a free body diagram. We've done a cut here uh, at a particular location over here, say. And we're looking at what is going on there. And what we notice here is if I select this uh, to be of unit width one, so I take that face unit width one. This is unit width one. Right here. Okay. That in that case, if this angle is alpha, then this length must be sine alpha. Similarly, uh, this will also be sine alpha. And then if I look at, and this is in the hoop direction. So if you recall, theta is in the hoop direction. And m is in the axial direction. So if I look at that, in that scenario, then I have uh, that this is a hoop. And NF is a load, right? That's that's a load acting along this direction. So then what we have then, uh, in addition to that, is that if I look at the axial direction, I have this width also, W, or one, unit width one, and this becomes cosine alpha, and this becomes cosine alpha in that direction. So then I can do a, I can do a perform a calculation uh, and that calculation is going to be summation of forces in the hoop direction is going to be n theta minus two NF sine square theta equals zero. And the axial direction I have n phi minus 2 nf cosine square theta. So that's what, what we get here. And notice that in, say, for example, as an example, we only had helical plies. In that example, then, uh, m theta, for applications p times r, and n phi is p r over two. Then what I can I can do I, what I can do is plug this in here and take the ratio, so that I'll get p r or p r over two, and I'll get the tangent squared theta, uh, which is two. And this allows me to find what helical pi angles I need. What is a pi angle I need to really have a truly just helicals, no hoops at all. And that, that's a very interesting idea to kind of find that. Uh, and, and there's only one answer to that. Uh, if you only were to have he helical plies, uh, what those helical plies should be? That's actually a very interesting question that, that merits discussion here. Right. So we can solve for theta very easily. Uh, we won't do it here, but uh, you get the point of what we're trying to accomplish there. Now, say I have more than one helical, or I have multiple apply angles, uh, and, and notice here NF here. Uh, is a load carried by the fibers of a single ply. So each layer of filament one structure really consists of two fiber plies, uh, two plies of fiber. And the total load now, if I have multiple plies, multiple plies, not just one. So if I have multiple plies at multiple angles, right? So that, that's going to be slightly different, right? So that's going to be n theta. So for, I apologize, for multiple Plies. I can write the following equation. I can say uh, I can have n theta, the total load in the hoop direction, is going to be two n one, where n q 
here is the number of plies one at the angle alpha one, right? So then I'm gonna have NF one. I can just I there. So actually, let's make it more general here. Where M is a total number of plies, uh, y, helical angles, uh, sorry. Uh, and then I have two NI, NF I, sine squared alpha I. And that's for the X, for the, for this for the hoop direction. And then for in phi, I have the same thing, but now the cosine of that. So that's the equation we have for that particular situation. And if I, if I were to have only two arbitrary wind angles, then you can determine the loads carried by the filaments um, at those arbitrary angles by solving these two equations. Okay. So for the case, for the case of only two wind angles, we can then now solve for by solving these two equations, I'll just show one of them. I get NF1 equals N theta cosine squared alpha two minus N theta sine squared alpha two divided by two N1 cosine squared alpha two sine squared alpha one minus sine squared alpha two cosine squared alpha one. And if I want to find the solution to say uh, the, the NF2, I can then do that as well, okay? But we, we won't show it here right now. So, so that's how you're gonna find the fiber stresses when you have the load these are look carried by the fibers per unit width. And you can then find the average stresses Okay, the average stresses for the fibers wound at alpha one and alpha two. Now let me remind you that we talked about how in the most general sense this load is going to be equal to t times stress the wall thickness but when i'm looking at this local local um, free body diagram uh, since i said that t is a thickness tf and i talked about this tf earlier that the thickness of the fiber, right, is going to, so if I have thickness TF, that's gonna be for two filament wounds, the one going plus and then one going minus. So in reality, the thickness of this is TF divided by two, and the one here is TF divided by two for a single layer, okay? And for that reason then I have the load carried by the fiber, so the load carried by the fiber here is going to be NF1 equals stress in the wind angle alpha one, okay, T alpha one divided by two. Or I can just write it this way. Okay, and I can do the same thing. I can find the stresses, the average stresses in the second wind angle. By just switching one and two, I'll get the same answer. Okay, so um, that's how you'll go about that.
So if I now say, say that I have only 90 degrees of hoops, and I'm going to have a helical angle alpha. When angle. So what I'm really saying is plus minus alpha because I'm also always going to have one going that way and one going this way. Minus alpha, plus alpha. So that'll give me a thickness for that wine angle of n phi divided, if I use this formula that I talked about, of this amount. And then for the 90 degree, the thickness I need for the, for the 90 degree hoop is n theta minus n phi tangent squared alpha stress in then hoop orientation. Okay, so that's what we have, and we know what we have for internal pressure. For internal pressure, so what wh what are the different things I can have? I can have internal pressure. Axial load. And I could have bending load. For internal pressure, I have that A in theta, the hoop, is going to be P times R. And the axial is not going to contribute anything there. But for the axial direction, I have P over 2. And if I have any axial load, so I have a tension load applied of T, then N phi is going to become the tension load applied. I apologize for that. Tension load T divided by 2 pi R. And then I have, if I have a bending moment applied, it's going to be, in this one, it's going to be M divided by M divided by pi R squared. And I won't prove that here. The important thing is that you know that uh, this could add up. If you have other loads applied to the cylinder, like an axial load, bending load. I could have pressure as well, of course, okay? So that's that example there, uh, or that, that formulation I just went through. Um, and that's how you will go about this analysis, okay? Um, if I weren't, wanted to really look at an example really quickly, And I have uh, a 30 degrees, so example one. I had a pressure of 1,000 PSI. And I have a radius of 5 inch, inches. OK. Then in this example here, uh, let's say I was looking at uh, helicals. Of plus minus 30 and hoops. So then I can go ahead and calculate in theta and assume there's no, no axial load. No bending load. Then I have in theta for the for the hoop. And M phi equals PR over 2, which is 2,500 pounds per inch. Okay. So, so th that's that. And then I can now calculate the thickness required for the helical. So thickness required for helical ply angles. And that's going to be T alpha. Just use the formula there. Okay. And let's assume the allowable, so 
I didn't give this information. We can assume the allowable design stress or strength is going to be 43,681. I'll go ahead and plug that in here to figure out the thickness I require for this design. I know in fee, which is 2,500. Okay, 43861 here, cosine squared of 30. That gives me a thickness of 0 0.076 inches. That's the thickness I need for the plus minus 30 degrees. And I can calculate T90, how many hoops I need. And I get N theta minus now N phi tangent squared alpha sigma 90. And that's going to give me 0 0.095 inch for the hoop. Okay. So now I can then determine the composite thickness, the total, what is the real composite thickness well simply uh, what i need to do is take the the, the t okay t is going to be total thickness is going to be 0 0.076 plus 0 0.095 and that's an inch divided by the volume fraction, the fiber volume fraction, which typically ranges between uh, this fiber volume fraction, this can vary between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 typically. So that's going to give me a total thickness of 0 0.285 inch. And this is coming from the fact that you have a matrix material. It's not just fibers carrying it, though, it's also the matrix. You're going to have the matrix there as well. Okay. So that's, that's the, the problem. Uh, if you know the apply thickness, you can calculate a number of applies that could make this happen. Let's look at example two. Uh, we have, uh, in all these different Unix, uh, units, um, we have a diameter now. of 300 millimeters and we have an internal pressure of 22 megapascals and we use a factor safety of 1.5 And we use, we're going to use a wine angle of 19.5 degrees. And we're also going to say that ply thickness we're going to use 0 0.5 millimeters. So we first call calculate the hoop load per unit width. And that's going to give P times R, which is 22 times 150 millimeters. That gives me 303, gives me this. And then what is the axial load is going to be the same, but divided by two now. 
which is going to be 1650. And so now I can calculate the ultimate strength. What is the ultimate strength when I include the um, factor of safety? So I'm going to call that stress uh, design. Let's call it. And we're given the tensile strength of the material or the fibers divided by factor of safety. In this case, XT is uh, known as 1290, basically. And this is in megapascals. So we're going to design then to 860 megapascals. So then the helical thickness can be calculated by the formula I showed previously. So T alpha F sigma design cosine squared alpha. And when I do this calculation, get a thickness of 2.16 millimeters. I know this value from here. I know this value from here. And I know alpha, which is a wide angle 19.5. So I can now calculate the hoop thickness as well. And then I will look at here. And again, this is the form that we used earlier. Right, we used that earlier. So we can then continue our calculations. And I get 3.6 millimeters here. And then I have to use the fiber volume fraction information. The fiber volume fraction for this kind of material tends to be 0.72 or so. But this particular material is 0 0.72. So the total thickness then is going to be T equals 2.16 plus 3.6 divided by 0 0.72. And there's a fiber volume fraction because I have matrix material. So that makes sense. And then we get 8 millimeters here. So if I calculate the number of helical plies, I simply have to take this thickness of 2.16 and I have to divide it by the volume pressure 0.72 times the thickness of each ply 0.5, I'll get about six there. And then I can repeat it for the number of hoops. And for that, I'll get 10 plies. So this is the way you will work the problem. I hope this makes sense. Uh, you have a great day.